It's often the small things that give a report that finished, polished look. And dynamic titles is definitely one of them. Now in this video, we're going to have a look at how to set them up and what different options we have. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if you're new to this channel and you're looking for ways to learn more about Power BI, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. We have for you every week short videos, longer info videos, and different challenges to practice your Power BI skills. Now let's have a look at dynamic titles. So let's dive in straight away and add a dynamic title to this chart over here where you see the sales over time. Now I have a few different slices and what I would like to have is that I show the selection of the subcategory in the title of that chart. Now to make this work, we first of all need to have a measure that returns what subcategory is selected. And second, we need to apply conditional formatting to the title of that chart. And let's start off by creating that measure. So I'm gonna name this measure chart title subcategory selection. Now here we want to use a function that returns the selected value for the subcategory. And that function is selected value, which returns a value when there is only one value in the column. Now the column name that we are looking into is the subcategory name, and we don't need an alternate result at this point. So let's just close the brackets and press enter. And then we can go to formatting, title, and here you see we have the conditional formatting button. Let's click on it. And then we want to format it by the field value. And from the second dropdown, choose the measure that we just created. So over here, I add it to the matrix table chart title. And you see here we have chart title subcategory selection. Now you see it doesn't return anything just yet because I didn't make a selection from my slicer. So if we go to our slicer and let's say we select desktops, See, it returns a desktop. Okay, so now I want to put a little bit of text right in front of it. So I'm gonna go back to my measure and I can simply add some text over here. So sales for space and then quotation mark and then use the ampersand sign to combine the static text with the variable. All right, so that seems pretty straightforward. However, there are two important things that we have to watch out for. First of all, the value that gets returned by the measure needs to be text, otherwise we cannot use it for conditional formatting. And second of all, what if we select more than one value from the dropdown? Let's have a look. Okay, so let's insert a new measure again. And this one I'm gonna call chart title year selected. And just like before, we can use the selected value function, where we now want to return the year. All right, so then we can go again to conditional formatting for the title, but now we're going to base it on the selected year measure. Okay, so over here, chart title, year selected. However, it's grayed out. Why is it grayed out? Well, that's because the year that gets returned is not text, all right? And then you cannot use it for your dynamic title. All right, so how can we fix it? Well, to change it, to a text format. Now, if we go back to a measure and right in front of it, we put sales for in between quotation marks and combine that with the year, then what gets returned will be text. And then it will work again. So if we now go to conditional formatting and then choose field value and base it on the chart title. Yes, selected. You see, now I can select it again, click OK, then choose from the drop down the year that I want it for. And here you see sales for 2020. Now, if you don't want this sales for at the beginning, then you can also just do ampersand, quotation mark, quotation mark, and then what gets returned will also be text. Of course, you can also put it in a trim function or format function will also work. Okay, so now we need to tackle that second problem. And that is what if we have more than one value selected from the slicer? Okay, so if I go, for example, here to product subcategory, see now it says desktops because desktops is selected, but now I'm going to select also laptops. And you see my dynamic title disappears. Now to fix that, we need to adjust the measure a little bit. All right, so let's go back. So for a measure, we cannot use the selected value function anymore. So which function can we use? Now we could use, for example, the concatenate X function, which will concatenate 
all of the selected values in the slicer. All right, so let's right concatenate X. Now let's say we want to set this up for the subcategories, then we can get all of the unique values in the subcategory name column. Now we want to return the subcategory name. And as a delimiter, we can put in a comma space. And if we also want to sort it in a certain way, then we can, for example, say, okay, we're going to sort it by the subcategory name in ascending order. Okay, but these last two arguments you don't necessarily need to put in there. And you see, now it returns desktops, laptops. Let's add one more. So for example, over here, MP4, MP3. See, now also gets added. So you see, it's pretty easy. Now you might say, okay, but what if we have 10 different subcategories, then the title gets a bit long and you probably want to cut it off. Okay, so we need to count how many subcategories are selected. And when it goes over, let's say three, then say, etc., or and more subcategories. Now we can write this, of course, manually like we did before. However, we can also do a quick measure. So let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna go over here, use a new quick measure. And you see here, all the way at the bottom, we have a concatenated list of values. And we can just drag in the subcategory name and say where we want to cut it off. Let's say after three. And then we can use that also on our conditional formatting for the title. And you will see that when I now select more than three, for example, also monitors, you see it cuts it off and puts in etc. Now let's have a quick look at what formula got generated for us. And we'll see it is a bit longer. However, it's kind of the same thing. So here you see it's just using the concatenate x function. Uh, but there is a check with how many values you actually want to show. So over here, you can also easily change it. Huh? Just change that number over here at the top where we define the variable. And you see at the beginning, it counts how many subcategories are selected. Now, if it goes over, then it does this part. And if not, it does this part, what we already wrote. Okay, so maybe a few things that you might want to tweak. So here we could add another variable with the static text. Okay, so we can call this one static text. Now we can use that variable then here just after concatenate. Now what do we want to concatenate? Well, basically what was already returned and that static text that we just created a variable for. And then also here at the bottom, I want to have that static text in case there is less than three subcategories selected. So static text, ampersand sign. All right, press enter. Now you see we have sales for desktops, laptops, monitors. What if we just have one or two selected? Sales for Bluetooth headphones. All right, so it works. Now, one more thing, and that is what if we have nothing selected at all? Now, one more thing, what if we don't have anything selected on the product subcategory slicer? Well, then it lists three subcategories. And maybe you just wanna say sales for all or just sales. Well, then we have to make another small adjustment to the measure where we can go after the return statement and then say if is filtered and then refer to the subcategory name column. Well, this basically checks, okay, is there a filter in place for the subcategory? If it is, then do what it was doing before. If uh, there's no filter in place, that means, well, we can see all of the subcategories and we just want to return sales for all subcategories, okay? Now I go all the way at the bottom of the formula. And uh, now here I can then say sales for all subcategories. And that makes the whole solution a little bit cleaner. Okay, I have two more small tips for you. What if we apply that conditional formatting that returns the selected year? However, you want to say for the most current year, sales for current year. And if it's not the most current year that's selected, you just want to say sales for 2019, 2018. All right, now to do this, you can make use of a switch function. So let's create a new measure with the title, chart title switch. Now here we can type in the switch function and as an expression, we can then type in true. Now, what do we want to check for? Now the first value is going to be uh, the selected value for the year. Now, if that one is equal to, let's say 2020, 
then we want to return current year. And otherwise we want to return the selected value of the year. Also here, make sure that you return a text by adding this ampersand sign, quotation mark, quotation mark. And then we can use it for conditional formatting on a chart. And you will see when we have 2020 selected, it returns current year and otherwise it returns the actual number of the year. Now we can also use variables to make it a bit prettier. So usually I would say var title start sales for, then the actual variable part, and then combine the two as what gets returned. Now the last step that I have for you is how can we return the selection from multiple slices? Well, also here, we just have to tweak the text code a little bit. So let's create a measure for the chart title, subcategory, and year selection. Now we already have a measure that returns the subcategory selected, a different measure that returns the year selected. Well, why not reuse them? So I can use a function called combine values. Now the delimiter that we are going to use, let's stick to the comma space. Well, the first expression is gonna be for the subcategory selected, and then the second part for the year selected. And then let's also use this for our conditional formatting. So over here we have the subcategory and the year. Now, if I want to put some static text in there, I can do that as well, of course, I have to go back and then say again, sales four. And for the second part, I wanna say in the year, and then the year itself. Now that comma looks a little bit ugly, so let's get rid of it. And there you go, that's it for applying conditional formatting to your title, to create this dynamic title that can make a big difference and gives your report that finishing touch. So this is how you can show your filter selection or your slice selection in the title of your charts. Now I hope that you took a lot out of it and maybe you know different ways of how we can use this feature then post it in the comment section below very curious to hear about it and if you have any questions also let me know now if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on everything that we post make sure to subscribe hit that notification button and i hope to see you in the next video